Feliz sábado, familia de Cristo. Happy Sabbath, church family from the Flores family. We miss you guys. We love you guys and hope you guys are all doing good and you guys are safe. Remember, always live to bless others. Hi, South Bay family. We're the Grant saying hello from Washington State. We miss you all very, very much. And we want you to always remember, please bless others. <laughs> we miss you. There is a quiet place Far from the rapid pace Where God can soothe my troubled mind Sheltered by tree and flower there
Michelle and John for preparing our hearts for worship today. This is the portion in time family where we would rally together in prayer. You know, we had an amazing uh, midweek prayer with uh, Chaplain Peters. Uh, the, 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 the Zoom meeting almost exploded. There was just so many people that wanted to hear a word, that wanted to pray together. There was this sense of unity, this united prayer, this movement that, 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 that you could feel that was tangible to me. Family was tangible through the screen. And so, Father, today we want to ask our Heavenly Father, we want to ask him a blessing over each and every family member that is out there listening today. That if you would rally together with your families and your loved ones, that, that, that you would take the opportunity to pray with each other as I pray out loud. And so family, would you just, just join me and each other in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the privilege it is that you've allowed us to worship. Considering, Lord, that we, we might be isolated in our own homes, it does not mean, Lord, that you're not with us. And although we might be distant, Lord, we are not disconnected. And so, God, today we just pray simply that you would prepare our hearts and our minds for the, the, the receiving of your word. We pray, God, that in a very special and a mighty way, that you would bless every single family that is represented today. That, God, that you would cover them, that you would be with them, encourage them and give them hope, and give them peace. Father, we can't wait for the time where we can meet together in person again. But Lord, the stronger desire for us is that we would meet you in person and that we would never have to deal with separation again. And so, Father, today we just ask a blessing over those that are impacted by COVID-19. We want to uplift all the first responders, our health care professionals at the very front of the line of this pandemic. We want to pray, Father, uh, not only for, for our church leaders, but also, Father, for the leaders of this country, Lord, for, for the, our state and local leaders. We want to uplift, we want to uplift them today to you, Lord. We want to pray for every family that's out there, for every person that is struggling, that is challenged, that has gone into this pandemic with, 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 with things already on their plate piling up. And this pandemic just added to something that was already traumatic in their life. I pray, God, that through this worship and through our service, that, Father, they get a sense of, a sense of peace and, and a sense of comfort. And so, God, we pray, we pray simply that, that we are always reminded that, Lord, that you will walk with us, you will help us get through these times of trouble, and that, Father, that there is a greater hope and a greater plan that you have for us. And so until that day, Father, help us to be vigilant, help us to be faithful. These things we ask a blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, kids, have you ever been really afraid? Maybe it was after a really scary dream, or maybe it was because your room is really dark, or maybe it was during a loud storm. Everyone is afraid sometimes, and that's why we need a little something called courage. That's what our lesson is about today, and it's from Psalm 27. There's no need for fear if the Lord is your light. The guy that wrote the psalm was named David, and he had a lot of enemies. He had a lot to be afraid of, but here's the first verse he wrote in this psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? David knew that with God by his side, he didn't have to be afraid. And that's the same for us. When we have God in our hearts, he will always protect us. God invites us to talk to him whenever we are afraid. People do some pretty weird things when they're afraid, like screaming or running around or pulling their hair out. But have you ever thought when you were afraid that you could just talk to God? You can talk to him and ask him to help you make you brave. In fact, he wants you to do that. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. It's that easy. It doesn't matter how scary the situation is. God is always willing to talk. So next time you're feeling afraid, tell God about it and ask him to make you brave. The key to courage is waiting for God to show up. 
That's what David tells us at the end of the psalm. Memory verse. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Whenever David started to feel afraid, he worked hard to remind himself that God is bigger than his fear. He knew that if he asked God to make him brave, he would do it. He just had to wait patiently. Keep that in mind. When you ask God to make you brave, it doesn't happen right away. So kids, next time you have a bad dream or feel afraid in the dark, think of this lesson. Remember that God is there with you, and if you ask, he'll help make you brave. Hey, it's Pastor Meshach, and I just wanted to give you some information and details on how you can still invest and sow a seed into the South Bay Church Ministries. Because of the pandemic, uh, there has been a few restrictions and guidelines, and so what we wanted to do is try to make things as easy as possible for you. And so what we have is two options. The first option is that you can mail your tithe and offerings to the church. Just go to our website, look for the address, put your check in the envelope and make the check payable to the South Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. The second option is going to our website and going to the online giving that's there. When you click on the link, it'll give you instructions on how you can still invest and donate into the different things that we're doing here at South Bay. And so with that being said, we just wanna say thank you. Thank you for your prayers, thank you for your donations, and thank you for your faith in what we're doing. And we ask that you would continually serve and be a blessing and be in the church out there as we get through this pandemic together.
And uh, happy Sabbath. Just want to welcome you to our uh, service today. 
things are looking a little bit different as we've uh, taken the precautions and the right measures for us to um, do shelter in place, shelter in place. And so I just pray that this message uh, finds you in good spirits and in good health on behalf of our church family and our pastoral staff. Uh, we just want to say, man, we really miss we miss everybody. We miss the the contact. We miss the fellowship. Uh, we miss the the meet and greet. But we're just praying that each and every one of you are in good health and that you're in good spirits. Look, today uh, today's word is actually entitled um, "Shelter in Place." It is um, a part of the series that we've been doing uh, since this pandemic started, uh, "Faith Over Fear." And so today's word um, is found in the book of Psalms, uh, chapter ninety-one. Psalms chapter 91 seems to be one of those uh, Bible verses that has been floating around for so many years. And, and now we're actually being able to read that in, in, in a context where it has a, a lot more meaning uh, to it. Uh, when, when I learned Psalms 91 as a kid, I remember the Psalms being known as the 911 Psalms, meaning that whenever you were in trouble or whenever there was an emergency, you would call Psalms 911. It wasn't the 911 that we think of that we would call the authorities, but this 911 in, in the case is that we would call on the authority of God. And so before we get into the word of God and before we pray, um, I'm going to invite you family just to turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 91, and we'll be reading verses one through two. Psalms chapter 91, verses one through two. And, it, and if, if you feel the need to, we make it a custom uh, to be upstanding in the presence of the Lord as we read his word. And so Psalms 91, verses one through two, if, if you are there, would you say amen? All right, all right, here we go. Psalms 91, verses one through two. It reads this, whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high says this, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him whom I trust. And so family, today we would ask that God would bless not only the reading, the hearing, but also the doing of his word. Would you please bow your heads as we open in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we simply ask that you would just captivate our minds and our hearts uh, for this, the next uh, few moments. Father, we just shut out all the distractions because, God, we believe that you have a word for us. And that word is power. That word is transforming. That word is comforting. It's encouraging. And so we pray, Father God, that as we get into your word, that, Lord, that it will speak to our personal context. It will speak to us personally in our own individual needs and wants and desires and challenges. And so, Father God, again, we pray that your word would achieve its purpose in which it is set and not return back to you void. In the mighty name of Jesus, may everybody say amen and amen. Family, so when this whole quarantine um, started, when the quarantine uh, a few weeks ago, it, it, it actually did something, right? If you notice it, I don't know how many of you guys have been handling the, the quarantine, but it actually birthed what we call the challenge. Right. So and I'm not talking about emotional, physical challenges that we that we deal with on a daily basis. The challenge that I'm talking about is that if you're anywhere near a social media account, if you're on IG or whether you're on um, Facebook, there there have been so many different challenges uh, that people have have been um, tagging other people to do. For instance, uh, uh, I was tagged last week uh, to do a push up challenge. Right. And it was 25 push ups for 25 days. And each time you would tag 10 more people to do 25 push-ups for 25 days and they would tag 10 more people. And the whole purpose behind this challenge was to bring awareness uh, to mental illness um, and, and to suicide. And so uh, I remember getting challenged for that. There was another challenge of, uh, it's called the old school picture challenge. The old school picture challenge that you would find a picture of yourself back in the day and then you would post it and you would tag 10 other people so that they can tag 10 other people and they would start to show different pictures of how you looked way back in the day and then the, my favorite challenge though was the was the uh the genre of music challenge this is where somebody will pick a genre of music they'll pick their favorite song they'll tag you and they'll ask you to tag 10 other people and to challenge 10 other people right uh to to pick a song within that genre and, and, and to share that with, with everybody that's on their 
what's on their feed. And so I remember my cousin Daphne, who was sending me an oldies challenge. And I was listening to all the different music and the different oldies that other people were that were tagged uh, on that on that post. And, and I remember listening uh, to other people's playlist. And I remember the, the five stair steps who, who sings this song back in the day. It's called Ooh Child. Right. And some of you know that song. Some of you young folks have no idea what I'm talking about. But that song is says, Ooh Child, things are going to get easier. Right. And then and then and then. Uh, I, I remember uh, somebody else tagging me with the gospel challenge, the genre of the gospel music. And they were saying, hey, I want you to post your your favorite gospel song. And so I was listening again to the other people that were sharing it. And, and somebody posted Andre Crouch's song, Take Me Back. Right. That that song that says, take me back, take me back to that place. Well, right. And so so another challenge was one that was the praise challenge, praise and worship music. And uh, I remember hearing Bethel music and, and the song that goes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Right. I am a child of God. And something happened. Right. Because then I realized that every song that I was listening to uh, in the past month actually spoke uh, to the pandemic that was taking place today. It's, it was funny because how songs and music seems uh, to always speak towards our experience. And every, every verse, every song that we listen to was actually speaking to the, to the, to, to the conditions and what we were living in today. And so that's the powerful thing about music is that not only is music timeless, but, but family, uh, music is reminiscent. Right. So so that speaks towards our current situation. Now, every song that I'm listening to is just reminding me of what we're going through today. Someone was playing the Akon song locked up. They won't let me out. And I'm thinking I'm locked up. We're in quarantine. Somebody else was playing a, 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 a Alan Jackson's country song. Remember when? And, and then it started to make me think about the things that we used to do before this this pandemic. I don't know if it was a week or two ago, but we got the news that Bill Withers had uh, passed away. And, and so one of the songs that he, he actually wrote, the, the, the iconic song that he wrote in the lyrics, it says, sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. And then he goes on to sing, lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you to carry on. Family, I'm thinking to myself, it, 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 it's times like this in our pain and our sorrow where, where we're in quarantine. Who, who do we lean on is the question. When it, when it comes to what's taking place right now, what is your, your place of refuge? What is your shelter in place? What is the things that you tend to lean on when you're not strong, when you need somebody to run to? What is your go-to place? What is your, 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 your safe space or, or who is your support and who is your, your covering? You see, family, what 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 have you put in place for support in times of trouble? What is your shelter in place? You see, the Red Cross actually gives a definition or a description of what they mean when the term shelter in place is, is spoken or referenced. And I want to share that with you. It says this, that shelter in place is to seek safety within the building one already occupies. It says rather than to evacuate to another area or seek community or emergency shelter, the CDC actually says that the safest place for us to be at this moment is at home. The safest place for us to be during this pandemic, right, is the shelter in place is for us to be at home. There's something biblical. There's a principle behind this idea of that being home is a safe place. If it's a safe space in regards to a, a biblical understanding of what home is. Because I'm mindful too that some of you are at home right now and, and home might not be a safe space for you. And you're probably asking the question, well then how, how can I be in this environment right now and it's not even a, a physically, emotionally safe space for me. And it, I want to encourage you that, that even in the midst of what you're dealing with today in your very own home, whether it's abuse or whether it's the challenge of anxiety and emotional stress and trauma, I, I want you to understand that there is a safe space that you can go to. And, and that, that is added to the Lord. The Lord is offering us this safe haven that even in the midst of what we're dealing with, if we could find solace with him, if we could find unity and connection with God, we could find a safe space. So the question 
is this again during this severe pandemic. They encourage us uh, residents to go find a place, a place of shelter, a small space where you can you can find refuge. You know, this past week, this this week, uh, Mississippi was hit with a tornado. And I remember my sister calling me early this week and we were checking up on each other. And, and, and there was this 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 tornado that was wiping through their community and, and they passed her in the church. And so so. And, and he said, you know, the majority of the members that were there, uh, they were affected by this tornado. And my sister, she was calling me from the bathroom with her and, and, and their newborn son and, and their kids. They, they were seeking shelter in a small space in the room. And so the family, this is what I'm talking about today. Family is just like, what is your safe space? What is your your, your shelter in place? Where do you run to uh, when, when when times of trouble are upon us? You see, what precautionary measures, family, have you taken and have you put in place during this time of trouble? You see, it's interesting when you look at the Bible and it says about what we ought to do in times of trouble. You see, in Psalms 20, verse 1, if you would turn your Bibles there to Psalms 20, verse 1, it actually gives us um, this picture of, of what we ought to do or who we should lean on or trust in in these, in these uncertain times. And so Psalms 20, verse 1 says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the the name of God of Jacob not only protect you, but may he send you help. Watch this now. He uses this language. He says, will will he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion? Family, this is some interesting language that is used. God is, God is, is saying to us that he will send us uh, help from the sanctuary. This suggests that there, there must be something about the sanctuary that we need to know about. This must suggest that there's something going on at the sanctuary or somebody within the sanctuary that can offer us some sort of help. And so what is the sanctuary in regards to the scriptures? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. You see, the word sanctuary is used uh, to describe the biblical tabernacle, as is the phrase uh, that is used, uh, a, a tent of meetings. Uh, the sanctuary is, is a meeting space. It is a place where God dwells uh, not only uh, with his people, but he, he offers a safe haven and a, and a shelter in place for us to come and we meet and commune uh, with God. It, it was their safe space. Uh, it was their shelter in place. So, so even when we start to read uh, from Psalms 91, and it makes also a mention of this shelter in place, uh, I love the way the psalmist is painting this imagery of the sanctuary. Right? He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You see, the blessings here promised are not, not for all believers, family, but, but it's talking specifically uh, for those that are in a close fellowship with God. It's speaking towards a, a close proximity with God. It's not, it's not that, that we would just believe, but that we would desire to be in closeness and nearness uh, with God. See, family, I want you to know, that as, as, as sanctuary is in, in mentioning, it's in regards to like pitching a tent, right? Like you, you can't be in a tent with somebody else and not, not feel their presence, right? Like the, the picture of a tent suggests that whoever's in that tent, right, are in really close proximity to each other. I remember uh, years ago when, when Marty was first born, uh, we went out with a couple of our, our buddies. We have like this social committee that meets and, and picks different places that we can all go hang out with. And I remember um, one of, our, one of our, our good friends picked Malibu for us to go and camp. And it was crazy because like we were the, we were the biggest people there as far as being uh, Samoan and Polynesian. Uh, uh, and when we got there, we realized that we had the smallest tent out of everybody else there. Right? As a matter of fact, we had one of my other friends that his tent was so big that we could probably put our tent in his tent. And so we had one of these small makeshift tents that would probably fit one person comfortably in. Uh, but since we were cheap back then, or since I was cheap back then, and I was thinking to myself when we went to buy the tent, like, We'll all fit in there, right? And so the, the picture was us, me, Linda, and Marley sleeping in this tent. And literally my feet are hanging out the door because we didn't have no room, 
right? We didn't have no room for, for anything else, for, for, for my feet to go. I had to unzip the front door. My feet's hanging out. It looked funny. And, and so when we're talking about pitching a tent, we're talking dwelling in the presence of God. It's kind of hard for us not to be in the presence of God and not to feel his presence. And so family, one of the commentaries writes this about the sanctuary that I want to share with you today. He says, he, he talks about the, the, the not only the, the, the function of the sanctuary, but it, it talks about the outer courts of the sanctuary, the things that take place and the function of the sanctuary uh, was, was for, for, for people to, to bring their sins uh, to the sanctuary. And, and, and in, in, that, in that space, in that outer court, right, it says the outer court worshipers little know what belongs to the inner sanctuary. It says, or surely they would, they would press on into the place of nearness and divine familiarity becomes theirs. It says, those who are the Lord's constant guests, this is, this is a key word, those who are the Lord's constant guest shall find that he will never suffer any to be injured with his gates and he pledges for their protection. Family, this is good news. See, because some of us choose to hang out on the outskirts of the spaces where we need to be. Some of us are more comfortable and don't realize what's really taking place in the in the inner sanctuary because we're too busy hanging out on the the outside, the, the outer space uh, of the sanctuary. We don't know the reality of what's taking place inside. You see, when I used to haul freight, I used to deliver in this place called uh, Brawley Beef. Right. It's, it's a it's a, a beef manufacturer out in Brawley in Imperial County. I was driving a truck for three hours from Riverside all the way there to drop off equipment. And, and when I used to deliver there uh, for the first three, four months, I had no idea what was actually taking place inside of this warehouse. I, I figured they were packaging beef. I, you know, I did see uh, cows driving there. I, I, I had no idea the reality of what was taking place inside of that building. And so one of these days I was loading my truck and one of the guys asked me, he says, hey, have you ever been inside? I was like, I've never been inside. I've been here for three, four months, never known anything that happens in there. And he's like, look, I'm gonna take you inside. And so we go inside in this warehouse and it was pretty graphic. It was pretty gruesome to see the way that they were slaughtering animals to, to, to make beef. To put it to put it lightly, I had, I didn't know the reality of what took place in the building until I went inside and saw it for myself. And so the same thing as we're talking about the outer court. Some of us like to hang out outside of the outer courts where the where where they say the cleansing and the sacrifice takes place. And and so all this that I'm sharing with you today, family, is post resurrection. We celebrate the resurrection. Hallelujah. Praise God. Death was defeated. Where is your sting death? But I want you to know that it does not stop there. That Christ left the tomb. And when he left the tomb, he actually went somewhere. But some of us like to hang out at the tomb. Some of us like to hang out in those dead spaces. Can I tell you, family, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, Jesus left the building, family. Jesus has left the building and we like to hang out around the tomb and in some dead spaces in our lives. And we can't we can't hang around dead spaces in our lives and expect our life to come to life. You see, listen, family, the outer courts is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of cleansing. But what's taking place inside the sanctuary is far more significant than what's taking place outside the inner courts, the inner sanctuary. You see, Jesus did not stay in the tomb family. He did not stay in the place of sacrifice. Or actually, he entered into the inner courts, into the holy place to begin, family, a good work and intercession on our behalf. And so real quick, I'm sorry for those who are watching this. It might be uh, a bit heavy for you, but let me just hurry up and get to the point. You see, just as the priest did not remain in the outer courts, Another commentary says this, just as these things were preparations to move into the inner court and then the high priest into the holy of the holies. It says we should also dwell there uh, ourselves that we should not have to want to dwell outside for too long. You see, God wants us to grow deeper in the shelter place with him. He wants to grow deeper in our faith. He wants us to grow deeper in our relationship. You see, the whole premise family behind the shelter in place the, the sanctuary message is, is, is simply this. It's just that God wants to be with you. 
right? If, if, if you don't get anything else about what I just said about the sanctuary, and, and maybe you're still just trying to develop your faith and, and a lot of this is just kind of going over your head. What, what I'm trying to get to is like the shelter in place, the sanctuary is just, it's just a, it's, it's a reality that, that God wants to be with you. God desires to be with you. He wants to tabernacle with you. In the New Testament, dwell in tabernacle, right? It says that it literally means to live or to camp in a tent. It is a dwelling place. It is a place where, where God wants us to, to make our home with him. He wants us to come home and, and stay home. He wants us to stay put. But for too many of us, we're, 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 we're visiting. We come and go as we please. Look, look, I want you to know this. It's like in order for us to really understand and to claim the promises that God has for us, we really have to look at the text and the context in which that text is speaking about. You have to look at all the characters in the text to really get a deeper understanding of what the text is speaking towards and what it's what it's talking about. And, and for, for example, Psalms 23, very familiar text. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. It says, I shall not want. Just in that, those few phrases there, the promise in that text is that if we are with the shepherd, that we have everything that we need. Right? And so to understand the context of the promise, the promise is this, when I'm with the shepherd, right, I, I, I don't need anything. Meaning this, like, we are the sheep, Right. And Jesus is our shepherd. He leads us. He guides us. He protects us. He covers us. And so the thing about a shepherd is this is that he has to be in close proximity to the sheep. You know, the sheep always get a bad rep for, for not being super intelligent. But it's not the fact that the sheep aren't intelligent. Right? They're, they're, they're actually really magnificent animals. The thing about the sheep is that they tend to wander off. Right. And so that's the danger in the sheep is the sheep tend, tends to wander off. And when the sheep wanders off, the shepherd has to go and get the sheep and make sure that the sheep is in close proximity with it. Because when you wander off, the, the sheep becomes and puts himself into a, a vulnerable state. The sheep becomes vulnerable when it's separated from the shepherd to claim the promise is to understand the context. The context is that we have a shepherd and we are the sheep. And we need the shepherd to keep us in close proximity so that we don't wander off and our lives become vulnerable. You see, I want you to know, family, this is the promise is that God will provide for your every need. You see, when we're talking about Psalms 91 too, another commentary shares that every child of God looks towards the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat yet and do not dwell in the most place, the most holy place. They run to it at times and, and, and enjoy occasional approaches, but they do not habitually reside in this mysterious presence. You see, shelter in place, family, what we're talking about here is a, is a safe place for you. It is for us to stay home, is to be in close proximity with God. The more, the more you leave, family watch, the more vulnerable you are. The more you leave the house, the more you leave the shelter, the more you make yourself vulnerable to the elements that are outside of the shelter. There's something to know that when we're in the shelter and we're in closeness and the nearness of God, that there is a covering over our lives. You see, the same is in relationships to our, to our desire to want to know God better. In our relationship with Jesus, we can't just visit, visit occasionally and expect to receive a blessing that come with having an authentic relationship with him. Right. For some of you who are for some of you who are dating. Right? I don't know who you are or some of you are dating is like um, uh, we, we don't want to date anybody that only comes to us when they need something. Right. If you're in a relationship like that, you better get out of it real quick because it, it, it's not about you. It's about them. Right. Imagine if, if the only time somebody visits you is when they want something from you. And it almost seems like our relationship with God is the only time that we want to be close to God. The only time that we want to have a close proximity to God is when stuff is going on. And so the blessing behind this pandemic is that, is that everybody is now searching. Everybody is trying to re readjust their priorities. They're, 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 they're discovering this desire to want to be in close proximity with God. Uh, but prior to, to things happening, some of us, when things are going well, we, we tend to distance ourselves from God. Right. And, and so just visiting on occasion 
is, is, is not going to work. It's not, it's not a healthy relationship when the only time you visit somebody is when you want something from them. It's like even when things aren't going well, you approach this closeness and this nearness with God. Family, it just reminds me of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. You see, you got to know that when the son left home, there was pleasure for a moment, but then there was famine and he began to be in need. He left home and the very thing that he thought would bring him freedom was the very thing that actually enslaved him. And so when he left, the Bible tells us that there was this great famine that had took in over the land and that he began to be in need. Now, now, now watch this now, because I believe that the reason he was able to go home as an option was because he already knew the father had a shelter in place for him to dwell. Right. He was he was he, the, the Bible suggests, too, is that the, the, the father not only had a shelter for him, but he had a shelter for everybody because he says, look, I'm going I'm to go back home, but I'm not going to go back home as a son. I'm going to go back as a servant, meaning that the father even had shelter for the servant, let alone for his son. And so he knew that as an option to go back. And so he, he thought to himself, look, I, I need to go back home. And, and let me tell you something. When, when the son came home, family, he, here is the beautiful thing. When the son came back home, he, he, he came uh, and the father was already waiting for him at the back porch. And uh, the Bible tells us that he didn't, he didn't have to wait to get to the house. The father got up and he ran towards his son. Now watch this now, family. It also shares that what happened when he got there, not only did he embrace his son, not only did he cover him with his presence, not only did God cover his son with his presence, when he came back home, when he came to the, to the shelter in place, but he says that he went and he grabbed a robe. He told, he told one of the servants, go grab a robe and put it, put it over my son to cover him. Can, can I tell you something? Look, family, when, when, when he took that robe, you know, the visual that I got, was the father taking a robe and throwing it over his son and, and the very object right of, of the robe casted a shadow over, over the son that covered the son that the robe not only casted over the son but the shadow from the robe that was that was in between the, the external elements and then the son it covered him it sheltered him family it, it was covered by the shadow watch this now family the shadow of the almighty it was covered with the shadow of the almighty it was the covering of the robe and the presence of the father Family, when I left home, because I'm, I'm a runaway. I mean, I never stuck around long enough to deal with any consequences. The, the more I left, watch this now, the more that I left, the more that I was estranged towards my family and towards home and the things of home. The more that, that, that I left home, the longer that I was away from home, the more distant I came mentally, emotionally, the connection to home Right, seemed foreign to me. But family, I, I, I remember I alienated myself from the blessings of home. I isolated myself from the shelter and the presence of my family. But, but look, when, when, I, when I finally came back home, hallelujah, when I finally came back home, I was able to get to know my family on a deeper level. The proximity and the presence of being with my loved ones again drew me closer to understand my siblings in a deeper level, to understand my mom at a deeper level, to understand my father at a deeper level. Why? Because family, I came back home. I came back to the shelter in place. Let me ask you this family. What, what do you have in place during times of trouble? What do you have in place during your times of trouble? Are you are you locked and loaded for the fear of the government to take over? Psalms 20 verse 7 tells us this. He says, do not trust in chariots or don't trust in horses, but trust in the name of the Lord, thy God. Meaning this, for some of us, we're, we're, we're trusting in, 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 in our own might, in our own strength. And God is like, don't trust in those things. He's like, trust, trust in me. Is your shelter in place? Or that stimulus check that is, that, that is going to hit the bank. If it hadn't already hit the bank already, is your shelter in place in addiction? Family, can, can I tell you this, man? Every Everything that is not of God that you have used or as your shelter in place cannot love you back. These things cannot give back to you the way that God can give to you. 
You see, family, I want you to know that to, to suggest that there is a shelter in place means this, that, that in order to put something in place, it's, it's preparing us for something that is about to happen. And in order for us to have this space that we can go and be drawn to, God knew that there were going to be a time where he needed to put a shelter in place because things were going to happen, trouble and sorrow and all this stuff would take place in our world. And he says, look, don't even worry about it because I've already have something in place for you. You see, family, our, our only hope and our, our only help comes from God. The one who dwells with you, the one who desires to be with you, the one that wants to hang out with you, the one that wants to commune with you. And so, family, today I want you to know, won't, won't you let him in, family? Won't you, won't you commit and won't you follow him? Won't you come home to him? Won't you come back to the shelter that is God? That in his presence, not only will you feel comfort, but you would find that true life can only exist when you're in the presence of the Almighty. And so family, today in closing, I just want to invite you that wherever you're at, I don't know where you're at, maybe some of you have, have wandered off as we all have. Maybe the, the shepherd is drawing you back in and, and is wanting to you to come back so that he can cover you, that you could be in his presence, that he can comfort you and sustain you and hold you up with his righteous right hand. And so if that is you today, I want you to commit yourselves to coming back home. I want you to commit yourselves to coming back to the shelter that is in place, which is God, which is his presence. And so if that is you today, family, we, we, we want you to not only pray with us and receive them right where you're at, but we want you to go to our website and there's going to be a connect card there that you can link to and you can fill out your decision, your name, prayer request, and, and what you desire. We want to, we want to, even in this time of separation, we want to be good stewards to the decisions that you're making for the Lord. And if you would do that, you would go after we pray and would fill that information out and then we will contact you to see if we could plug you in to some of the resources we have for Bible studies, to join a life group, to get involved in, in service or whatever that may be. We want to make sure that we want to provide something for you to foster your decision. And so family today, our appeal is simply that you would come back home, to come back to the Lord, a shelter in place to dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege and the blessing and the promise that you've given us. The promise, Father, that says that he would never leave us, nor will you forsake us, you'll never abandon us. And Father, that nothing can separate us from your love. Father, we're good to know that even for the prodigal son and daughters, Joes have a shelter in place for us to come home to. And for those that are out there listening today, that if they want to come home, I pray, God, that as they open their lives and their hearts to you, that, Father, they would receive you, and that, Father, that you would receive them. And then, Lord, then we want to go to the practical. I pray, Father, that we don't just speak words, and the Father, that we don't just say that we receive you, but, Father, may you draw them to make the commitment, Lord, to to partner with a faith community, with, with, with people of faith uh, that would rally around them, support them, do Bible studies, walk with them, encourage them, uh, uh, do life with them. May, 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 may they take that necessary step to foster that call that you have on their life. And so, Father, we ask these things in the mighty, precious, holy name of Jesus. May everybody say amen and amen. God bless and have a happy Sabbath. Hello and welcome to the South Bay Church Weekly News, where we give you, you all the news you want to hear when you want to hear it. I'm Ian. And I'm Aiden. This week, South Bay has many opportunities to get connected online with fellow members during the quarantine period. For families and young kids, we have a Kids Life group that meets every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. 
For all you women in Christ out there, our Women's Life Group meets on Sundays at 9 a.m. While our Young Men's Life Group that normally meets on Tuesday night is on a short hiatus until May, we have another Men's Life Group that meets every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Also, don't forget we have a Sundown Light Group at 7 p.m. every Friday at night at M and everyone is invited. For more information and Zoom info for all of your life groups, please visit our website at selfbaychurch.com. That's our news for this week. We hope everyone is staying safe and healthy out there. This is Ian and Avery signing off. Thank you. Don't forget to live to bless others. If you've been blessed by the content on our channel, help us by hitting the like button and subscribe button below. Once we get to 1,000 subscribers, we'll be able to unlock new features on YouTube and earn money for the views to support the ministry. Also, when you subscribe to our channel, you can get information and notification when we upload new content and start a live stream. And as always, you can visit our website at southbaychurch.com for more information about our ministry and upcoming events. Thanks again for joining us, and God bless.